You may not believe me, but there is hijinks afoot. Everyone, this is Archangel. There is an agenda to elevate females as better than males. So, despite the fact that males have built the world, which demonstrated unparalleled talent, strength, and intellect, all this is marginalized as we imagine and pretend females to be the stronger, smarter, more beautiful, elegant, graceful, caring, hygienic, artistic, altruistic, benevolent sex. Oh yes, female exaltation, male devaluation, is alive and well. Now, since we really have no female Einsteins, or Newtons, or Beethovens, or Teslas to bolster assertions of female superiority, thus the gynocentrically entrained have to make up or embellish areas that females seem better at than males. And females being better than males at something, anything, this is more ammunition, another bullet point proving the female exaltation narrative where females fancy themselves as superior, and males worship females as divine angels that supersede male worth because of uterus. Observing the aggregate works of our human predecessors, it is clear that males far outpace females in so many areas. Thus, the vaginasty, a collective populace that is dedicated to female elevation, takes female behaviors, average, everyday proficiencies that females are competent at, and uses such as proof of superiority over males. So, we take female predilection and use that as proof of superiority over males. For example, females are much better than males at compelling utility, manipulating with sex, applying makeup, eating ice cream, menstruating, and cat hoarding. However, to give female exaltation legitimacy in the face of male accomplishment, we need to take mundane tasks and zest them up or make up new scientific terminology to help foster the females are better meme used to continue the propaganda of female superiority. So, a couple more items we are forever hearing about as proof females are better than males, well, besides everything, is multitasking and emotional intelligence. I cannot recount the number of times I have heard the multi theme regarding females, which makes them seem like they are so much more advanced because they have new and improved multi features. They are like a railroad line with multiple tracks, and guys are just a simple single track. <sighs> Boring. You betcha, females are multi orgasmic, multi talented, and multitasking. We have been inundated with such propaganda as this to the point that we simply accept it without thought. Yep, females are better, and here is more proof. But really, look at these assertions beneath all the fluff and baloney. Multi-orgasmic does not mean females have some advanced upgrade. It merely means they are base model humans without refractory periods that follow ejaculation. <sighs> well, whatever. They still have capabilities that males do not, which makes them better, right? Uh, no, because males do have the capacity and capability to be just as multi-orgasmic as females, given the proper conditions. Next, females are multi-talented. <laughs> females can go out and get dirty and play in the mud with the boys and clean up nice and pretty. They can be good at the violin and be a swimmer or an ice skater and a book reader. Oh, wow. Yeah, because guys cannot do any of these things. Nope. Guys cannot be good at multiple things as well. No way. Males cannot have opposing interests or talents or proclivities. Only females. Yeah, this is just malarkey gynocentrically entrained cattle ingest and then turn around and parrot to make females seem better without really analyzing the meaning of the assertion multi-talented. Cows are multi-talented. They can walk and defecate at the same time. Yeah, I know. It's amazing. Then, of course, we have females being superior multitaskers. Oh, please. We labor to devalue males by using ubiquitous claims of female multitasking abilities. Most of this claim comes from the supervisional tasks used in child rearing. Women are better at multitasking than males. We claim superiority here because females can talk on the phone with mom or girlfriends while she bounces a kid on her hip. Or because mom can both cook popcorn in the microwave as she simultaneously listens to little daughter's homework at the kitchen table. 
we like to proclaim females as multitasking winners because she can reach behind her seat and smack the misbehaving little squirts in the back seat as she drives. And we pretend this is proof positive that females have better cerebral functioning than males. And thus they are better than dudes because guys have absolutely no competency when it comes to monitoring laundry in the washer at the same time pasta is boiling and little junior is playing with blocks on the floor. This image has grown into females can type memos, answer the phone, help customers, correct employees, put up with condescension and sexual harassment from male coworkers, file folders with her earlobes, and do all these things in high heels all at once. We slander males as unable to walk and talk at the same time, or sit and chew bubblegum simultaneously because they are offensive simpleton ogres who are lucky to walk in a straight line because, well, walking involves lots of multitasking by the brain. Oh, wait, so I guess some males can multitask some things, but not as good as females, right? So, females are still better, since dudes fail at juggling life situations and everyday tasks with the proficiency of females. Never mind the fact that males built and maintain this entire world. I guess civilization building doesn't involve numerous things at once. Oh, actually, it does. So, we simply take simple-minded males and give each man a single task to focus on. You build houses, you make sewers, you discover flight, etc. But hey, hold up. Then we have to have a multitasking supervisor to oversee the incorporation of all these things into a cohesive, functional society. And since it was not females that oversaw global communication network installation, or pyramid building, or civilization construction, this must mean that some males are multitaskers to such a degree that females cannot match. This is such a ridiculous claim that anyone with two neurons to rub together can pick apart. However, I heard about a study one day on the radio while driving that stated having too many irons in the fire at once frays one's nerves, meaning that multitasking for its own sake leaves people feeling anxious, unsatisfied, whereas pouring your focus and attention into one thing at a time leaves you more satisfied. So maybe this is why females are so frazzled, confused, discontent, anxious, unhappy, and depressed. Because they are such superior multitaskers. Next, I hear so much ado about emotional intelligence. As yet another area, females are far superior to males. Obviously, we can test intelligence quotient, and, well, females are not beating males in the numbers. But we tout females as superior to males, so we have to come up with another ruse to support this. Emotional quotient. And now, many folks, especially in female-worshipping spiritual communities, now herald emotional quotient as more important... IQ is so old school, archaic patriarchy propaganda, whereas EQ is new, cutting edge, state of the art human assessment, which incidentally we find females superior at. So, we take emotion, add intelligence, and now we have a new ruler for judging females as better than males. Because females are more emotional. Yes? Uh, <laughs> yeah. No. Emotional intelligence is understanding the emotions of self and others. This requires thought and reason, whereas females acting emotional is simply females acting out emotion and impulse without control. There is a difference between sensing the emotion of others and acting impulsively on feelings precipitated by environmental stimuli without reflection. Females are not emotional gurus, they are emotional impulsives. They simply act out feelings as they arise. They do not have some emotional advancement. Many have emotional retardation stymied at the level of children who simply act out basal emotions in response to environment, and society enables this. They can get angry and throw temper tantrums, or hit males in public. They can get sad and cry anywhere they like. They can act out any number of emotions, anytime, anywhere, without restraint, and people rush to comfort and protect them. Females can cry or scream or collapse on the floor in any emergency situation, and they are comforted for this. Meanwhile, someone has to be the adult and squash impulsive emotions to do the saving and rescuing, and that would be males. 
Emotional is not the same as emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is the ability to sympathize and connect with others. Emotional is impulsive toddlers throwing temper tantrums. Oh, you betcha! Females are definitely emotional. This impulsive emotionality is directly responsible for the notion that females are so complicated and hard to understand because they are quiet and contented one moment, then suddenly happy, sad, upset, anxious, scared, or depressed the next moment. And we think them enigmatic because we cannot predict their emotional patterns. Because we infantilize and coddle females every day, every time they ring the bell, thus they have not been made to develop or temper emotionality. They simply act out emotion whenever it strikes them. We are a gynocentric species, and so it is no surprise then that females are given most anything and everything they want. So they are akin to two-year-olds who are placated every time they throw a temper tantrum. So no, females are not complicated. Because of exaltation, they are simply used to getting everything they want and being placated no matter what emotion they indulge in to the point that now they are spoiled brats living off emotional impulse and mood swings. They are not complicated, they are spoiled. Males have emotional impulses, but we have to keep ourselves in check. Somebody has to run the world while spoiled brats throw temper tantrums and make imperialistic demands every time a new emotion crosses their radar, which leaves their male servants scratching their heads wondering why she acts the way she does and how can they predict her wants and needs. Gosh, women are so complicated. Huh, really? Can you predict the wants of a spoiled toddler living off raw emotion devoid of reflection or control who gets everything they want? No? Well then toddlers must be really complicated too, huh? I'm sorry, but females are not mysterious complicated enigmas wrapped in cryptic riddles unknowable to mankind but rather females are exalted to such a degree that they are indeed indecisive because guys give them everything they want. So, hmm, what do they want next? And that will entertain them for two minutes until they want something else, then something different two minutes after that. This also ties in with another ability females are said to exceed at, intuition. Who has not heard ad nauseum about female intuition or a mother's intuition? Again, because we view females as deities, we imbue them with superpowers, and having some ESP or extrasensory perception is one of their special abilities, not available on the human model male. We pretend that females acting out emotion is somehow more in tune with spiritual affairs. Once again, we have beings acting out mood swings or emotional impulse because they have never been made to temper their mood swings to be a stable adult. We think emotion is synonymous with extrasensory perception or greater sensitivity to the unseen. <laughs> it's malarkey to try and imbue females with yet another area that they exceed males in, all of which add up to back the assertion that females are indeed superior to males. We have to proselytize females as better at more things more of the time. And all of this propaganda of females as more sensitive, right-brained heart feelers is simply rhetoric to add value and mystery to emotional toddlers used to getting pampered for their mood swings and temper tantrums. It is not superiority. In fact, impulsive emotionality is not an asset but a liability. We need adults to run affairs, not infantilize bipolar toddlers. So, you might be thinking, it is good that males are made to be stoic and swallow their emotion. Well, the problem is that it goes too far. Males are made to choke and be ashamed of their emotions under duress. Teaching a child emotional temperance is valuable. Causing them to repress and squash emotion is volatile. Okay, but children are said to be more sensitive to extrasensory stuff. So if females are infantilized and acting like children, then it's possible the intuition thing is true and females are more sensitive. All humans have such abilities. It has nothing to do with emotionality. Children, like animals, are said to be more sensitive because they have not been taught otherwise. They have not had mental limitations or belief restrictions put into their heads, telling them that this stuff is not real. They see things because nobody told them they cannot. 
However, after years of schooling and indoctrination, mental barriers are put in place, which kill off childlike wonder and imagination. This is the underlying message in Pink Floyd's song, The Wall. Yet, adult females have been so entrained. Thus, their mood swings have nothing to do with increased abilities. Males are just as strong with paranormal abilities as females. Guys also have gut feelings about things, which is intuition, just the same as any female. All the right brain heart emotion stuff is linked to females as offspring nourishers, which we translate to mean females as the caring half of humanity, and this is purposefully meant to disparage males as cold, robotic, logical, unfeeling thinkers, while females are the caring, tender hearts. Please, look at male devaluation and disposability if you want to see the caring tenderness of most female hearts. Moreover, thinking, which is associated predominantly with guys, is becoming more and more embattled as a negative trait. We should think less and feel more. Hence, we are losing our ability to critically think as we try to act more and more emotional, thinking less and less about what we are being told by the media or governments or reality television. If anything, guys have more emotional intelligence than females as we are supposed to read females' minds and interpret their moods correctly or we get the silent treatment and no sex. Females are definitely more adept at acting out emotion, yet males are compelled to be more adept at reading emotion in others and relating to it, which is what emotional intelligence is. So, golly, that means males have higher IQs and EQs. Multitasking emotional intelligence intuition. These are just a few of the ways guys are adding mystery to their deities, who, beneath all the exaltation and makeup, are merely unreasonable, undisciplined, irresponsible, emotionally impulsive women toddlers, the very same who we pretend are superior because they indulge emotion without restraint, which we now hail as emotional intelligence, which females are superior at. And since females are so superior, we hand them the job of raising the next generation of human beings. Societies are in turmoil, and one of the major reasons is because we have infantilized, emotionally impulsive, responsibility-exempt toddlers supervising males and raising the seceding generations. We are lucky that things are not more screwed up. Plus, we have males that are acting more emotionally impulsive, and this may be due in large part to the fact that we have had generations raised by single mothers. I mean, can anyone start connecting dots here? Females are superior, and multitasking, emotional intelligence, and intuition are simply a few more logs on the fire. Golly, dudes are so lucky to have these women folk. My friends... Stand with me, live free.